Hey everybody, it's your pal Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences, and this is Monday Minute. I've said a lot of things about native and custom models, and I was preaching about when never to use a custom model versus a native model. And I'm gonna flip this on its side for a moment here. And this is all about when to use a custom model from a native model. model. This is when you should choose to export a custom model from a native model. And there are very specific reasons why you might wanna do this. And one of these reasons was something I came across this weekend. And that was a 600 node matrix, a pixel matrix that had two outputs. So we have two string outputs, right? So 300 nodes on one string, 300 nodes on the second string. But in this particular case, the wiring started at the bottom left, as you can see here. And I'll click on this node layout. We'll get a lay of the land here. And we can see there are two strings. And it starts at the bottom left, right here. And it goes up, down, up, and then you think you would start right here, but this prop previous to this started up here. So we have node one that should start on the second string at the top. Well, X slice doesn't give you the ability to pick a start location on the second string. I would love to see that. That would be pretty cool for this application and many uh, matrice applications uh, that, that might be like this. So this is one of these rare moments where I think exporting a native model really can be beneficial, exporting it to a custom. And I'm gonna show you why and how this works. So what we wanna do here is we want to leave the first string alone, but we want to change it so that the second string starts at the top of this pixel pole matrix. It's pretty simple to do. So again, real quick, lay of the land. This is a vertical two string, 300 nodes per string, three strands per string, which means there are gonna be three strands that make up uh, each individual string, so 300 nodes and 300 nodes. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna right click on this and we are going to export as a custom x -Lights model, okay? And I'm gonna throw this on the desktop and I'm just gonna call this uh, I'm gonna, I could either say key, uh, C or I could just put custom just so I know what it is. Cause you might need to use this again. So I'm gonna click save. And at this point, what we wanna do is we want to import that model. So I'm gonna drag a box. I'm gonna click on that model, which is the pixel pole custom. One that we just exported, click open. And there it is. Now, how do we know this is a custom model. Well, if we look over here, we no longer see the ability to set strands per string the same way that we did here. We have bottom left. We have our uh, starting location, node, strings, all that good stuff. On this one, it's a little bit less, a little bit different. We could tell it how many strings, but also we have this. We have the data layers. The custom model data is all in here. So what I'm gonna do here, first of all, we need this to be two strings and it's a custom model so we can do that. So we could tell it two strings. And we can also tell it to use uh, individual start nodes if we need to, which we do. And we want the second string to start on pixel 301, right? Absolutely. What's really kind of cool about this is that if you had a need where your string started somewhere in the middle and it didn't equal out, you could simply tell this what node to start that on and, and you'd be fine. So it's great for those sort of bizarre situations where you maybe it was year one and you wired it just differently and now you got yourself in a pickle. Well, x Lights is smart enough to help you out of that pickle situation. So let's continue with this. So we've told it two strings start individual nodes, one and then 301. And if we right click on this and we see our node layout, this looks pretty good to me. So we're starting at the bottom left. There we go, node one. And it goes up, down and finishes at the top. 
And then the second string starts at the bottom again, but we don't want that. We want it the second string to start at the top. And there's only one way to really do this. Now, there are other ways. Okay, so we could create shadow models, but I think that just gets to be a little too complex for this scenario. So here's what we can do. We can click on our model data. And I'm gonna open up the screen to where it's pretty big and I'm gonna bring this down because I don't really need to see that. And we're gonna be working in this area here. And what we wanna do is one through 300 is correct. We're not gonna mess with that. What we need to do is start this at 301. And here we go. I'm going to click on active, auto increment, 301. And this, depending on how many pixels you have, this might take you a little bit of time. So I'll be fast forwarding through this. I mean, I wish I could fast forward do it, but I have to really do this now for real. So I'm gonna click here and you just wanna follow this process until you get to the very end. If you make a mistake and you click again and you're like, uh oh, this is supposed to be 309. Go back here, change this two numbers back, make this 30, uh, where are we at? Uh, nine. There we go. So see where you left off. Make sure this is the starting number 308, 309, 310. And then you just follow this. So I will uh, as quickly and efficiently <laughs> as I can get through all of this. And from this point, I'll speed it up in the video. Okay, that took a little little time, little time. Good thing you didn't have to watch me do all of that. Now that we have these done, 100 to 300, and then starts at the fourth string coming down and finishes on 600. We are done with this. Click save quick, don't lose your work. X lights might crash, you never know. And now we have pretty much identical models. Uh, these will do the same things as each other. And now what we have when we go to our node layout or wiring view, you would see that the first string starts on the bottom left as it is physically wired. And the second string starts on the top as in this case, it is physically wired. If you don't fix it, uh, your effects will not look correct on this. And I am hoping that this fix here will apply to other types of issues where you might have missing section here. I know a gentleman sent me something this morning that he had some light fixtures in here and there were no nodes behind it. So he simply skipped from one section all the way down. So hopefully this will help him out in his situation and make the effects look correct. Uh, I believe he was in the Zoom room and they weren't able to solve this. So give this a go. I don't know if this will solve that, but you know, we, we, you never know until you try. All right, folks, this has been a longer than anticipated Monday Minute. I hope this has been beneficial for you. Uh, please uh, be sure to like the video if you can here in YouTube Bill, and uh, please subscribe. It helps the channel so much. All right, you folks take care. See ya.